you might say, well, this is of all the things that are going on in the world, this is utterly trivial. It is. It is completely trivial. But to uh, to know that they are that ready to silence any voice of any dissent at all, I'm not interested in having my processes controlled. All right, Dr. Lyle, how are you doing today? Good, good. How are things? Uh, things are things are good. Um, our last episode where you talked about the, the United States election, Tr President Trump getting elected and your thoughts on uh, how involved government should be in our lives and and how you know, things are going to be just about how they've always been. Uh, some adversity mixed with some opportunity mm -hmm. and uh, a really strange things happened. A really strange thing happened, which is I think it was one or two days after we posted it is the video got removed. Uh, but YouTube removed the video for what they called medical misinformation on vaccines. <laughs> and so this was your comment uh, here. And so and so let, let's actually go over the, the comment. I'm going to play it here. All right, guys. So our video for episode 345, not one or two days after we uploaded it, it got removed for medical misinformation. So I want to I want to tell you, I want to show you actually what the misinformation supposedly was, and then I'll actually show you, uh, you know, what the truth actually is. So uh, here's the medical misinformation policy, you know, poses serious of egregious risk of egregious harm by spreading medical mis misinformation <clears throat> about currently administered vaccines that are approved and confirmed to be safe and effective. So here's what Dr. Lyle actually said. When, um, when the head of the CDC had to admit that the vaccine was not working. It was clearly leaking and there was no efficacy to this. It was immediately apparent that no, no matter what, no matter what use it may turn out to find, it was absolutely not going to stop the spread of this virus. Telling us it's just a warning, can't be viewed. We don't earn very much money on the, on the video, so it doesn't really make a difference here. Um, but here's the interesting thing is you can take some quote re-education training. So just a policy training, um, or you can appeal the decision and you can take the training and appeal the decision as well. So I submitted an appeal. It's kind of weird because you can't really show proof that what Dr. Lyle said is actually true. I'm going to show that to you in a second. Um, all you can really do is click a button that says submit an appeal. That's really all you can do. Okay. And so you, you really, they just review it again and then they'll put the video back on. So let me show you actually what Dr. Lyle was referring to. So this is a press release from the White House COVID-19 response team in August of 2021, the summer of 2021. Okay, so now let's actually hear the press briefing from Rochelle Walensky. I'll now turn it over to Dr. Walensky. We'll walk us through some of the data that helped inform our decision to take action now. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, everyone. And doctor, as Dr. Murthy mentioned, I want to provide an update on vaccine effectiveness. I'll describe that are helping to inform our booster plans. Recognizing that for most vaccines, there is a reduction in protection over time. We have been analyzing the data closely from a number of cohorts in the United States and around the world to understand how long protection from the initial COVID-19 vaccine series will last. Examining numerous cohorts through the end of July and early August, three points are now very clear. First, vaccine-induced protection against SARS-CoV-2 infection begins to decrease over time. Second, vaccine effectiveness against severe disease, hospitalization, and death remains relatively high. And third, vaccine effectiveness is generally de decreased against the Delta variant. So let's jump into the data. On this slide, you will see two studies, one from New York and one an analysis of data from the Mayo Clinic. So it's muted for some reason, this video, you can't hear her talk, but you can see on the right side how the vaccine effectiveness, the, the acronym is VE, uh, declines <clears throat> from 92% to 80%. And then the vaccine effectiveness against Delta variant decreased from 76 to 42% for the Pfizer and 86% to 76% for the Moderna. 
and link them to individuals' vaccination status based on the state's vaccine records. This allowed New York to study vaccine effectiveness against. So she ends up going and reviewing the the the, the different studies that were done, but. But uh, but there you go. There's there's uh, this was in August 2021, and there's effectiveness of these vaccines even uh, reduced even further since then as they've done more studies. Uh, but there you go. Yeah, a little bit uh, a little bit weird and strange, but you were correct, Dr. Lyle. But you got censored for it. Pretty disgusting, almost unbelievable. You know, not not something that uh, uh, would have been true in the United States during the course of my lifetime. So this is a uh, we had something like this happen when um, different kinds of comments were made uh, with myself and Dr. Jen Hawk. And uh, I think I believe that was in 2020 on a podcast with uh, Rip Esselstyn that we had a flag put up uh, about disinformation. So this is really disgusting. And of course, the fact that the fact that it happened so quickly this time tells you that we've they've now got AI crawlers all, all over everything. In other words, so you, you're looking at these, uh, the fact that anybody would pull down that thing from a platform like that and call any comment that I made misinformation is, is really chilling. And so, you know, anyway, that just my, my example of why it is that, that that was the single biggest process that I had going into not so much this election, but really my my attitude uh, towards our federal government in the last several years uh, since then, I, I've generally had a, an attitude in, uh, relative to our government is, you know, it, 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 I have uh, I've looked at the government as is a sort of a creeping annoyance more than anything else. Uh, but that was over the line. And now we're finding out that. Uh, you know, we, we could go into who the people are that profited. Uh, we could naming names and companies. It wouldn't be very difficult to do this. But it's clear that the influences of those agents, because this is not happening by accident, reach all the way in to a computerized system, attacking a Beecher Jeans little midget podcast that only has a few thousand people that ever listen to it. Um and me not being in any way inflammatory, just simply stating the facts of what absolutely took place in the summer of 2021 with uh, with an absolutely accurate uh, rendition of what the claims were made by the United States government and the admissions that were made and how this uh, put hair up on the back of my neck and we get taken down. I mean, if, if people don't think that, uh, I mean, this is a joke compared to the attack that took place on Jay Betashera at Stanford, uh, who just got a big award from some place for standing up to the tyrannical process that he was threatened by Stanford University. He was threatened by uh, all over the medical establishment for him doing nothing other than there was no man in the world better qualified to be speaking on these issues than Betashera. So you're the uh, and and you know and he he said hey I just wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna roll over I just wasn't going to do it you you have to be willing in his case to flush your your Nobel Prize level winning career down the drain because you're going to defend the truth the uh, which you know he 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 he's he, he's standing up but you we see that we're not too far away from him being in a situation where he would have been cut down and he would have been cut down permanently the. Uh, he had colleagues uh, also that did get cut down um, that that were, were part of the architects of the Great Barrington Declaration. So anyway, yeah, what do you know about that? You know what I mean? That that sort of gets my hackles up and and uh, makes me feel like as we've talked over a bit that it's time for uh, for us to you know uh, essentially defend ourselves against this kind of BS. So what are we up to, Nathan? Yeah. So in in true beat your gene style, um, instead of trying to change YouTube, instead of trying to change, you know, this whole system, we are actually going to get out of out from under it. And so we if we were we just realized we were under a little bit of the boot of the censorship. Mm -hmm. And so we are now going to be streaming our podcast from a different platform. And uh, you may guess what it is. If you know what it is, 
uh, then then we don't have to say very much, but it's actually going to be the X pl platform. We are going to be now moving our podcast to uh, X. So you can check us out. I'll put all the links in our description to how you can look at us. And the podcast itself is not going to be changing. We're going to be doing the same things that we did before, answering listener questions, going over different topics. Um, we will be putting on the full podcast on X, but also different clips so that you can share them. Or there's maybe if you have one answer, you don't have to, you know, listen for 30 minutes to hear, you know, a different question. Um, I will still be posting uh, some episodes on YouTube, but that's not going to be our primary uh, source to get out to our audience. Um, and so, yeah, we, we're just we, we want to be away from the censorship and, and uh, away from the stress of having to you know, defend our ideas against people who were who had just an automated system to, to censor them. Yeah, the hell with it. Yeah, so no, that's good. I feel good about that. It's like good to, uh, and this is a perfect situation for us where we, we, get, we get slapped and then we, um, so this is the second time I've been slapped, which is, which is helps you. It's like, oh, okay, it hasn't gone away. And now we're way several years later where everybody has forgotten uh, basically about effectively a tyrannical situation that existed in this country. And uh, now that things have, quote, gone back to normal, you forget that there was politician after politician after politician after official after official uh, using the term the new world order. OK, it's like, boy, I hope you didn't forget that because that happened. OK, that was an orchestrated process. There was an extremely sophisticated, extremely repressive orchestrated process to go after anybody who uh, uh, basically disagreed with your federal government about the direction of how COVID should have been treated and how it how, how it should be managed. Anybody that spoke up, they got big trouble. OK, so, yeah, this was a chilling moment uh, in American history uh, and it was really bad. And so it it is now the ship is now you know all, that we almost tipped over uh, basically has been righted and it's it's sailing along now right side up again. However, it doesn't mean that we those elements don't still exist. And this is an absolutely uh, excellent reminder that it's still there. It's not gone away. It's maybe in semi hibernation, but it's big trouble. And so yeah, I didn't know that. That that is incredible that that little comment. I mean, it's no big deal. It's that this is, you might say, well, this is of all the things that are going on in the world, this is utterly trivial. It is. It is completely trivial. But to uh, to know that they are that ready to silence any voice of any dissent at all, uh, and not even real dissent. We're talking about nothing other than a recounting of the facts that are now embarrassing. Okay, it's like okay. You know, I read 1984, and so I'm not interested in in having anything to do with uh, with, with a you know outfit. I'm not interested in having my processes controlled by that. So yeah, we we will move on. We'll go to whatever outlets are are available. There's plenty of them now because we ain't the only one that have put up uh, with this kind of thing. So anyway, on we go to better things. And yes, I'm not. I will leave it to to the Don Quixote's of the world to uh, to try to to, to fix it. Uh, that's not my problem. My problem is uh, to simply not spend my time and energy there, but rather to maneuver around it, which is exactly what we're going to do. Yeah, fantastic. Good. So that's the end of this episode we're going to put on YouTube. And so uh, we're now going to continue on uh, for, for answering normal questions so that we don't distract from the actual point of the show, which is to talk yes. about psychology, evolutionary psychology in the modern world and how we can get clarity on different problems.